Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Hello everybody. Hello. It's Hello. a new year of podcasts. I know we did the Game of the Year podcast last week, mm-hmm. but this is a proper, you know, and the week before that we did the Q&A podcast. This is the first proper podcast. Vanilla episode. Vanilla, plain, boring as hell mm-hmm. episode of the Triple Jump podcast of 2023. It's pretty exciting. And of it the is. 200s. Yeah, 201. Well, the 200s, episode 201 today. Uh, welcome along, everybody. Uh, are you guys all right? You doing good? You okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. And with all of that no out of the way, no elaboration. I don't want to Comments. talk about my private life with you guys or how I'm doing and you don't want to talk about it with me. And no, that's save totally, that for after dark. Mm. That's totally fine. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the podcast. Uh, did you know that each and every week we're sponsored by a very real video game adjacent sponsor mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that helps us keep the lights on here. He's not back, is he? No. Dead no, Island 2, the spider. Uh, I think spiders have a much longer Christmas period than oh, do yeah, human they do. beings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, good for them. Is he still at yours? Yeah, I think so. Well, unless he's been eaten by a cat, but he was on the ceiling. Oh, so That could have happened. Uh, yeah, well, that could have. He's more likely to be eaten by a cat here than he is oh, at home what? even than here. <laughs> Sorry. Well, we pray for a safe return, regardless. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you like to know what the sponsor is for this episode? I've got it right in front yes, of me. Please. Yes, please. please tell us all about it. Uh, today we are sponsored by an exciting uh, upcoming collaboration between beloved British institution Wallace and Gromit oh. and uh, an upcoming space survival horror remake, Dead Space. Right. Uh, it's hugely anticipated, very delicious. Peter can't have any because then he'll get very sick. Mm. It's called Ched Space. Okay. And as sort of a marketing <laughs> PR stunt, they're turning the entire moon to cheddar, and we can all go up and just have some. Everyone knows the moon's made of cheese. Uh, it's Everybody already, knows. We don't need to turn it into cheddar. It's already cheddar. The moon cheddar. is made of cheese. Well, actually, it's made of special moon cheese. Yeah, because but he... they're, they're terraforming certain bits out oh, into cheddar. Because right. Wallace can't identify it when he eats it. He's asking Gromit, mm. wouldn't you know, is that... Is that thank you, Peter Stilton? Yes, etc. He's not entirely sure. You guys know so much more about Wallace and Gromit, especially Peter Peter knows so much more about Wallace and Gromit than I do. Peter worked on it, and that's why he was there. I am Wallace. Mm, (laughs) There he is. So, Ched Space, Ched Space, uh, it's coming really soon, and I hope you're excited to just take a little trip up to the moon to have some Ched. Would love to live vicariously through. um, I mean, you could always just have a funny tummy, just to risk it. You know, you're so vicariously. Yeah. Oh. Very good. Um, there's only sometimes you get to try moon cheese. Exactly. That's true. And well, it's actually, not moon cheese, Ashton. Again, no, it's not moon sorry, cheese. Cheddar it's from cheddar. the moon. It's cheddar from the moon. Thing Thank is, you. though, very mature cheddar. It, it's already it breaks down most of the lactose in the process of becoming mature. So I can actually it? eat. It's basically a crystal, cheddar. isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, crunchy cheddar. <laughs> Um, so yeah fantastic well we'll all go to the moon soon to celebrate the launch of Ched Space Mm. Uh, except we can't why but not because Ched Space isn't real it's because uh, the moon isn't real unfortunately the moon is not real it's a flat earth um, projection it's just a picture it's it's a dome up there it's just a big picture we're in a big snow globe and they just they've painted it on a big yellow thing with holes in on the ceiling sometimes I do worry that I'm being Truman showed you? Well, you you act like you're on a <laughs> yeah. TV show your most own days. days. <laughs> you Truman Show yeah, yourself. As, as you have admitted. Yeah. So, no, uh, we're not sponsored by Ched Space. But again, not because Ched Space isn't real. That's a very real collaboration. Yeah. I promise it's because the moon, the isn't, moon real. isn't real. The moon's not real. Mm. Uh, we're sponsored by wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. I very nearly forgot it then. I don't know why or how. Where for as little as $1 per month, you can submit questions to this show and uh, help us out. And there's loads of tears and you can ask questions and ask questions such as... Such as Callum Anderson, who asked a question such as... Hello, Bap. It's not a question. I am fortunate enough to have just got my hands on a PS5. This is my first PlayStation console since the PS2 as I migrated over to the Xbox 360 and then stuck to Microsoft consoles for a few years until now. Obviously, I'm excited to play all of the PS exclusives I missed out over the years, uh, such as Spider-Man, Tulu, that's The Last of Us, (laughs) uh, Ghosts of Tsushima, etc., um, my question for you three lovely people is if you could recommend an exclusive game on any console for people to play if they got the chance, what would it be? And in parentheses it says, see Legend of Zelda as a Nintendo exclusive, Halo as Xbox, etc. Ideally, something perhaps less well known than these massive titles though. Mm. Thanks and many well wishes for the rest of 2023. Lots of love, Cal. 
Thanks, Cal. Thanks, Cal. Looking forward to seeing you in the new Star Wars game. Yeah. Kestis. 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 Cal Kiskis. Christ. This morning's got weird vibes. Already, yeah. God. Um, so within the the bounds of Callum's question, Ke- Cal's kest- question. <laughs> Cal's <laughs> kiss question. Um, I... <laughs> Uh, so I, I've put aside all of the the big hitter exclusives. So my answer is not my number one exclusive of all time for the console in question. Mm. But I would say it is worth playing Shadow of the Colossus if you've mm. not played it. It's yes. a highly acclaimed game, but still one that kind of passed a lot of people by, even if they had a PS2 at the time. Um, I guess because it's you know, a little bit, a little bit esoteric, a little bit strange. Um, and actually, you can play it on more recent consoles as well. Is it um, compatible with PS5? Do you know? Anyone yes. Know? Yeah. It yeah, is. Because so. it had the PS4 remake from Bluepoint. Yeah. Shout out to Bluepoint. I, I know they're sure listening. They'd, Big uh, up, Bluepoint. Big up. They don't often get shouted Big out. Up. They're very little known studios, so yeah. I feel like we've got to give them a platform. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well done, Bluepoint. Point. Here's your roses. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it had been uh, PS5'd since it was on the PS4. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Shadow of the Colossus is well worth playing, uh, especially... Playing it for the first time is uh, a, a very uh, interesting experience. Um, once you've played it through once, it, it's, you know, sort of forever changed and you can never, it's one of those games you can never truly replay in the sense mm. of, uh, in the same way as your kind of first experience, but absolutely give that a go. Uh, it's a beautiful game. It's a fun game to play just in terms of how it, uh, you know, the the kind of the mechanics and so on. And uh, it's one that, more people should have tried at the time or should go back and try. Mm. And if you don't carry any self-loathing with you, like most people do, mm. then it will bring you down a peg. Yeah, it and, will. And you just need that. Humble so, you. Yeah. Mm. Ashton. Well, I picked one for all, th- like the three big ones, uh, like a PlayStation one, a Switch one, and an Xbox one. Oh, okay. Because um, Peter didn't read my message about it. <laughs> Clearly so not. So he didn't I saw do Ben's that. message. Uh, later saying we need to decide which platforms we're doing and then and I, I thought, well, said, why does it matter what I platforms said, we do let's do one for each yeah. and Ben said Sounds okay good. and then you did the question do that. says if you could just pick any console so. yeah well we just thought you know one for each that would be fun won't it okay um, anyway. which Halo which Halo game Peter? so when you say one for each you don't mean specific as in like one from Playstation from one each from company, Switch and one from, from Switch from, from, from any any console from that company yeah. okay well I can keep thinking okay. if okay. you if you, you, you do your three okay and I'll I'll give you an Xbox and a Tendo cool um, <laughs> my PlayStation One um, is not like an unknown game at all, but I just think it's one that doesn't get talked about very often, and that's Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Mm, I think oh, that's yeah. a really good game, and I think it really shows off what the PlayStation Five has to offer. And I think if you've just got a PlayStation Five, it's definitely one to check out um, and add to your library because I just think it's a really good game and it looks really pretty as well. Um, for Switch, I think an underrated classic is Luigi's Mansion. That game is really good. And I really enjoyed it when I first got it. I played all of it in like two sittings. I had a great time. Is that the third one on Switch? Yeah, the new, yeah, the third one that's on Switch. Um, And it's co-op, so you can play with your Mm. friend. Gooigi. Yeah, Gooigi, as we called him. Little Gooigi. Gooigi. (laughs) Gooigi. Little chicken Goojon. Yeah. Mm. Um, And then on Xbox, a game that I actually haven't played, and it is also on PC, so I know it's on PC as well, but um, is on my list, is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Mm. Um, Notoriously a very, very good game that deals with its topics very, very well. Um, And I think one that, I mean, if I had an Xbox, probably would have played by now, but is on my list to play on Game Pass. So... It's probably uh, a good one to check out if you had an Xbox. Yeah, before the, se- the before sequel. Before the sequel comes out. Mm, absolutely. Uh, taking things a step further by also refusing to stick to the parameters of the question. Uh, I've approached this from the angle of someone who's getting the console for the first time and maybe needs an introduction to the ecosystem, oh, shall we say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not necessarily, again, like with Ashton, a smaller game, but certainly they're bigger than the ones that you chose. <laughs> so <laughs> these are some pretty flagship titles. But uh, for PS5, I also 
would suggest Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart as a as a beautiful, colorful, fun third person shooter action game, uh, and also Spider Man Miles Morales because yeah. that's a flipping gorgeous game and it's well fun in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Xbox Series, I would suggest Forza Horizon Five because that's a flipping beautiful game. Oh, that is a really um, pretty game. And you know you can do cars and stuff, and everyone loves cars. Everyone has a car. Vroom vroom. Right? Yeah. Vroom, vroom. vroom vroom. Need I say more? I'm that's in what my it says on the box. Car. <laughs> Get vroom, out my car. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I'd recommend for Xbox Series is just Game Pass in general. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. even a particular game, just just Game Pass. Go on there and browse to your heart's content. Uh, for Nintendo, Breath of the Wild is the obvious huge flagship sti- uh, title. Sorry for that uh, that console. Still, I would argue, mm-hmm. uh, along with either Let's Go Eevee or Let's Go Pikachu. Uh, the Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow remakes, mm. but sort of all babyfied, so they're like mm. super accessible, and they're I think they're really fun. So. I actually think Breath of the Wilds isn't a good example of what the Switch has to offer in terms you of don't. like the actual like portability of it and like <laughs> Maybe this not. main selling point. Because I think if you're gonna play Legend of Zelda. You don't want to play it on your little screen. You want to put it on your big screen because it's a really... Oh, it's can, a big, I mean, you can, you can play it on your little on screen. Switch, look, though, I'm really not going to tell you off if you're playing it on the little Switch. screen. It sounds like Ashton wants to start a fight. Look, if you play on a little screen, you're a chump. Whoa, a chump. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, but I do think that... I think there's like... Like Mario Odyssey is probably a good one. To Mario like. Odyssey is also fantastic. Yeah. I suppose with with the 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 beauty of completely uh, disregarding the content of the question and deciding <laughs> to just do literally everything is that Breath of the Wild is better on the television. Uh, but let's go Eevee and let's go Pikachu can be played anyway. Mm-hmm. So you can experience the portability if you want. Mm. And also you can play The Legend of Zelda on portable mode. You However, can't. Ashton will jump out of a bush yeah. and, and call you a chump. And I'll call you a chump. You. And Call you a chump, you and then cry. I'll do that thing where you put the f- your finger on your chest and you flick your nose. Oh, you look- yeah. are you also going to do the what is it? Whatever, whatever, Minga loser. Minga. This is something Ashton taught us. It's very good. <laughs> whatever, Minga loser. Yeah, devastating. Devastating. Ashton didn't teach me that. I was aware of yeah, that already. I taught what? you that. Okay, hmm. you just weren't cool like I'm me. I'm seventy five years old. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Peter, I'm gonna. Uh, so I'll do Nintendo and Xbox now. I'm. I think I am within the bounds of the question in saying this, but I'm not within the bounds of what you two have done. Only Cal Kiss Kiss can really. Yeah. Which is that yeah. you guys have both picked current gen. The, the question doesn't say it doesn't specify current. So gen. if you're getting your new Nintendo 64. Mm. Also, the contents of the, the co- context, sorry, of the question is, yeah, Callum's just got a PS5. What mm. should I play? And so that makes sense with the way you've answered. But it just says any console. So if someone thought for the first, I've, I never had, say, an N64. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. going to get one. What should I play? As far as I can see. There's no so between us all, we've all done philosophers our own very will be dissecting this question until the yeah. end of time. Because I think um, Conquer, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, is a game that is well worth playing. Yeah. Um, again, as a non like huge title, you know, you think more about like Mario sixty four and stuff when you're talking about the N sixty four. But Conquer's Bad Fur Day, yeah, it's a, a colorful, rare platformer, rareware. Um, but it's got like that sort of strange adult edge to it, which mm. you probably, you know, especially if you don't know much about the game going in, which by now you probably do, uh, would probably take you by surprise, I imagine. If yeah. you're expecting it to be like Banjo-Kazooie, it's not like that at all. Um, so maybe that. Uh, and then somewhere in the middle, uh, how about, again, not one of the biggest of all time, but I, I quite like Condemned Criminal Origins. Mm. Um, for Xbox 360. It's not aged like super well. I've streamed it and I was like, yeah, okay, this isn't quite as good as I remember it. It's still fine. It's a good game. It's got the spooks. Um, and I think the combat of the second game is better, but the story's worse. So maybe the second one or alternatively just Hellblade. You know, I've also not played it, but I kind of wish that I had. And um, at some point I might end up with Game Pass and I'll go and give it a go. But yeah, it looks like one that is not uh, not to be missed. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. Well, we all wildly missed the mark there. So, well, yeah. we all hit it perfectly. Well, or, in yeah, or, we just, or we're all excellent. The in only our own one ways. who knows is Cal Kiss Kiss. Cal Kiss Kiss will have to let us know. Uh, anyway, we'll see you around, Cal. Thank you. It's time for a brand new section that we've never done before. It's new for the new, new year, new section. New year, new say. section. Sounds good. What's it called? It's called What We Playing. Mm. No. 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 No, it's a new year. Oh, okay. We're doing it now. <laughs>
It's what we play in time. Time to talk about the games, what we have been playing. I've sort of kind of set a cutoff of since Christmas because I yeah. played a lot over oh, Christmas yeah. and New Year. I forgot and, about we didn't And I mostly, and we've done a podcast since then, and I also have kind of forgotten about it. Uh, what have you been playing, Peter Austin? Well, I brought one game that I did mention on the previous podcast, which I played in full around Christmas. So it's sort of, with again... <laughs> only Cal, <laughs> only Cal, only Cal can tell us. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, so I played uh, all the way through Stray again and really enjoyed it a second time, as I talked about ad nauseum on the previous podcast. Uh, but yeah, to go back and just give that the the time that I should have given it initially, rather than sort of rushing through. I mean, I, I enjoyed it first time. I didn't rush, rush, but I rushed a bit. Mm. Um, and so yeah, to to play it through and just stop and smell the roses and explore the world a little bit more. Uh, it was really nice, and I got a lot more out of that second playthrough um, than I did the first, which is great. Um, and also, uh, I've continued to uh, play Tulu, as we now call it. Tulu. Tulu's La Trek, The Last of Us, uh, part one. Um, wonderful game. I uh, I was a bit, I was one of those cynical people when, um, like, before it came out, I thought not only before I'd even seen it, not, uh, not only did I think it doesn't need to be made, but then once I did see it, I was looking at it thinking... Does that look that much better than the remaster? Yeah, it actually does mm. quite quite substantially, especially when you now see some of the better side by sides. Like at the time, they were using what little footage we'd seen in the promotional material and com comparing that with um, stuff that they that uh, had been captured from the original. And there wasn't as much to to go on in terms of comparing this with that. But now that we've got both games in full. Uh, some of the stuff that I've seen online, the actual side by sides that people have found, uh, you know, it's night and day at times. Um, so uh, yeah, I've, I'm really having a great time with that and uh, looking forward to getting to that last mission and um, being a bit sad mm. about it. Yeah. Or happy. Or, or happy. happy. It's what I would have done probably. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Selfish. Flip the world. <laughs> um, so that's what I've been playing. I have been playing a few things as well. Um, I finished High on Life on like the 1st of January. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought you weren't interested. Well, I just was like, I'm just going to finish it because I was like halfway through before Christmas and then New Year's Day came around and I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Uh, my boyfriend's just playing Crisis Core and he doesn't want to talk to me, he just wants to play his game. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll play my game. Hmm. How would you like that? So I played High on Life and I finished it. It's fine. It's a, the game's fine. It's just a lot. Like people have like going crazy for it, and I, I mean, I get. I'm not surprised, but it's just fine. Like there's only like three, three worlds that you can visit, um, and then the more mechanics you unlock by the guns, the more kind of areas you can explore. And there's like chests and stuff around. There was multiple times where I got just fully stuck in areas and couldn't get out because like I hadn't got a certain thing. Um, and it took me like a full 45 minutes to figure out how I could get back out of an area that I'd got into. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fine game. It's, it, looks, it looks good. Some of the mechanics are interesting. Every single one of the boss fights is absolutely awful. And I really didn't enjoy any of the boss fights. Um, and eventually I just put it on easy. The final boss took me like two minutes because I just put it on easy and just didn't didn't even care. I was like, I'm done with this. Get out of my face. Um, and it's got a typical Rick and Morty humor. Like you have to stick a gun up one of the aliens' bum holes. Of course Brilliant. You yeah. Um, I mean, that's, because of course you do. Exactly. Normal. So, so in the way. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I've also been playing some Jedi Fallen Order mm. and enjoying that. I'm playing that on easy too because I'm a baby. And that's how I like to play games. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying that. I'm like, I think it's really pretty and I like some of the mechanics. I'm really crap at the combat and I keep forgetting about the mechanics that I unlock in my skill tree. But other than that, I'm having a good time. And the last thing I've played, which is basically all I've played this week, is Disney Dreamlight Valley. Mm. Um, I realized I hadn't got Woody and Buzz when they released before Christmas. So I thought now's as good a time as any, and I have been playing the game a lot over the last few days to try and get them. And I'm also trying to unlock Stitch, but that's really annoying because you have to wait ten days before you can actually get him. Because you wait five days, then you pick up another sock, and you have to wait five more days, and then you pick up another sock, and then you can finally summon Stitch to your island. Those cooldowns, 
Can you change the date on your Switch? Right. Uh, well, it's not my Switch. It's my PC. Ah. Oh. So I don't know. Okay. But um. But yeah, that's what I've been playing this week. I love Disney Dreamlight Valley, man. So good. It's one of your games of the year. It was. Mm. Oh, also, I forgot. I played a lot of um, Play Up over Christmas as well. Me and MB played a lot of it. We had a restaurant called Fishy Flaps <laughs> that um, that we have been like franchising, and it's great. And I had Kieran over last week, and he was roped into playing it with us because mm-hmm. a third having a third person is much easier to play the game than just two people so you've been playing too much high on life if you're calling your restaurant fishy flats yeah, yeah well it gives me the option to name myself fishy um, flats <laughs> oh jeez <laughs> yeah maybe uh, i have been mm-hmm. Ugh. God, I'm just trying to name the restaurant can now. Can you rename it? Is it too yeah, late? Yeah, you can. Okay, all right. So you can... That game, High on Life, to me, like, the, I've not seen that much of it, but I think at least the combat looks fun enough. Like, although you say the boss fights aren't very good, so maybe that's not a good thing. But, like, it's the downtime that looks kind of tedious to me. Like, just wandering around towns and stuff, and then it's just, like, you're talking to NPCs, and it's like, oh, subverting your expectations or being tropey fourth wall one of the worst things about it is in between like when you finish a mission and then go back to the house where like you're going to get the next mission there's an alien called gene and your sister that are right in this house and without fail every single time you have to sit there and listen to them have a conversation chiming in like twice and the conversation goes on for like five six minutes and by like midway through the game i'm just scrolling through tiktok while they're having this conversation and selecting an answer and scrolling because it's just so long and like you can't skip it you just have to sit there and listen to them talk about something i don't care about yeah i don't buy an fps for to sit and like absorb dialogue Mm. like I, I buy different and also, genre like, of games. It's not even important jo- like dialogue. Yeah. Like it's just guff. So yeah, that's what I've been playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on the fence about playing that game. Yeah, me too. Um, I might I might get ready. I give it. I'd give it a go and then if you get sick of it after the first hour or so, it doesn't get it doesn't get better. It looks okay. um quite graphically um mm. good. Yeah. Looks mm-hmm. quite graphically good, yeah. as they say. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, I have played a few things. The main thing that I, I played over the, the break was uh, Crisis Core, which I, I did finish and I ended up really, really enjoying and I wasn't expecting to enjoy it. Uh, the The main thing that I've been playing since Christmas is, uh, well, since New Year, actually, is a game that I'm not allowed to talk about until next week on the podcast. Oh. We'll be talking about it in Review Corner, uh, but I'm really enjoying it and it's great. Uh, Skyrim. It's I, Skyrim. I bought it. Scrim. I did buy Skyrim. Oh, is that what you've actually been playing? I have been playing Skyrim now. Oh. No, you haven't. Yeah, I have. It was on sale. <laughs> <laughs> it was on sale, and I thought, it's time for my uh, once every four years attempt to get back into Skyrim. Mm. Three hours. Yeah. That's how long I... Three hours Stealth Archer. Survive. Hate it. No, I didn't actually do Stealth Archer this time. Mm-hmm. I went uh, I went like full Barbara route, just like oh, yeah. big orc, orc berserker. Orc woman, yeah, mm-hmm. with, with uh, two-handed mm-hmm. sort of hammer, warhammer thing. And um, played through the tutorial, got to uh, Riverwood and is it Feindl, the the archer guy who's in the love triangle in Riverwood? He was just face down in the street. He's not meant to be, but he was dead. <laughs> Don't know why. Everyone oh, was no. just walking around him. So I looted his corpse and stole everything from his house. And then I went into the blacksmith's house where the whoever it is you escape with is meant to talk mm. to him. And uh, they just wouldn't talk to each other. Oh, they, just really? they just wouldn't do it. Uh, reloaded the game. I waited. I fast traveled, they came back, still wouldn't talk. So then I killed everyone in Riverwood, everyone that I was allowed to kill. Um, and then I moved down to sort of, you know, the little settlements surrounding Whiterun. Like there's the brewery and there's mm. the farm. Killed everyone there, killed everyone at the stables, stole a horse and decided to start a new life on the other side of the map because there was no way I was paying that bounty. And I had a lot of stolen stuff at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, went all the way to, can't remember where. And uh, got there and started doing quests like a, a good citizen. And uh, then I uh, got bored and uh, played something else instead. Oh. I'm, I'm trying to diagnose what it is that I don't, that just doesn't hook me about Bethesda RPGs anymore because they really did used to. Like it was the greatest thing ever. And I think maybe it's because it's a sense of apathy for sure, but it's also, I feel like, I've been in the Matrix 
and now I'm not in the matrix in a way and I can like see through all of the design mm -hmm. whereas before I used to be terrified of doing anything wrong because then I'd have to go to prison and they'd take away my stuff and I just feel like the consequences for my actions in this game have like I'm just a an absolute lunatic now yeah. when I play those games because I don't feel like there are any consequences for my actions and so I find it hard to role play in those games right when I feel like I'm, I almost transcend the rules that the game sets for me because I know how it all works. But now. does it not bother you that they will take away your stuff? No, because I know how to get back. Right. I, I know. I know. You just go to the chest. I find it really difficult to role play in these role playing games, and I think that's that's part of my problem. And I really, I'm very excited for Starfield, and I, I want to give it my all. But if it relies on the same sort of structure, which it will. Mm. Uh, I'm worried that I, I just, I might just be done with Bethesda RPGs in general rather than it just being Skyrim. I definitely like after Fallout, well, New Vegas was pretty good, but yeah, certainly Fallout 4, I I just couldn't get behind it. I didn't, I don't know what it was because I was excited before it came out. I was mm. like, oh, this looks great. And then almost as soon as I was in it, I was like, man, it's, it's just another one of these, isn't it? And I think that was, in a, a sort of a time of my life where I had a bit of Skyrim fatigue, mm. um, even though at the time when Skyrim came out, I did really enjoy. Well, so did you, to be fair. You yeah, really enjoyed Skyrim, Skyrim. Yeah. Um, but I, I now can still go back to Skyrim, and I'm actually really thinking of going back to Oblivion um, and maybe even streaming it um, and playing like a certain character. Uh, but I, I feel like I can't go back to Fallout still, and yeah. I'm worried that Starfield, because thematically it's going to be closer to Fallout than. Than it, you know, it's sci-fi rather than fantasy. I'm worried that like the moment I set foot into Starfield, I'll just go, huh, this feels like Fallout and I don't like Fallout very much anymore. So I'm also intrigued to see how well, because I don't I can I can role play, yeah. but it's more like the setting and the, the sort of the design of those games that can get me really. So Right. Skyrim is one of the best games ever made. That mm. that cannot be denied. The versatility and all the things you can do in it, the amount of content that that is in the game now, like the the anniversary edition is the one I bought. Yeah. The, the sheer amount of stuff you can do in that game, even in the vanilla game, and now is like doubled in size, is incredible. But it it can't hook me, and I don't know why. Because I want it to, because everyone can still play it today and have a great time, mm. and I can't. But anyway. That's what I've been playing. I'm looking forward to talking about the game that I've moan, uh, moanly, mainly been playing <laughs> next week on the podcast. So we'll get to that. It is time, however, to move on to a little corner. A little, little corner. Just a, just a little corner. Just a little corner over, the, little over there. Corner. And you're actually going to see us on camera yeah. for this corner. It's the review corner. Oh, Wha bam, bam, bam. bam. Baff Can I tell you about something? Yeah, I would love it if you would. This is this is something that I've been uh, playing with yes. a little bit. Now, I'll be honest, um, I accidentally left it in the office over Christmas because I meant to talk it before Christmas, but then I got sick. You were um, sick, yeah. So I would like to tell you about the Evercade EXP. It looks like this. It's a little handheld Ooh. device. Um We've covered some Evercade stuff we before, have haven't we? Some, we've had, we have. We've covered the verses and the original Evercade. I the original, um, yeah. And I employed my my boyfriend, who is a big retro console handheld aficionado. fanboy. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say, but aficionado sounds nicer, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> yes. And we played it, and he gave me his opinion, mm. and uh, I also have my own opinion. Um, so this game console yes. has a bunch of cartridges that either come with it or you can order separately mm -hmm. um that hold a bunch of retro games this one specifically has a bunch of inbuilt capcom games um and like arcade versions of i think street fighter and pretty fateful version of street fighter 2 as well um and it also has some original Evercade games on here as well mm -hmm. that aren't, you know, the retro stuff. Um, and those games are really hard. <laughs> a lot of these games <laughs> on um, on this console that are available on, both on cartridge and on the console itself are really hard. But I think a lot of these arcade games are because... It's the retro way. It's the yes, retro way. It's how it was. It's your coins. It is. Um, speaking of eating coins, there is a button you can press to add coin as if nice. you were in an arcade, which is kind of nice. So mm -hmm. you can see that the counter's going up as if you were putting like 
pound coins in to get an extra go. Um, you can also flip this console while playing it horizontally. So if you want to play the like, like an arcade, it. yeah. So you can hold it like a phone. However, it gets a little bit top he heavy when you do that because obviously it's meant to be played sideways. Mm -hmm. So when you put it top, um, top weight. What's the word? Vertical. That's what I was like. Well, thank you. Yes. Um, then it can be a bit top heavy. At uh, when you're playing it like so that. So there are certain arcade games that you would you would do that you with. You can. So you can play most of them um, when they are just, you know, in the handheld mode. But if you want to play them horizontally, vertically, oh my gosh, you yes. can. Yes, either, either or Either or you can, you can play them. There's yeah. also different ways you can have the screen. So you can have them kind of more, um, the frame rate better for now. Or you can have it look like how it would have done on an arcade console. Right. Uh -huh. Add like a filter to it sometimes, which is nice. Yeah, so scanline have that, filters, it says. Yeah, mm. so you yeah, have that, that nostalgia to it. Well, um, yes, yeah, you can have the nostalgia to it. You can put the arcade scan lines on if you fancy. Um, there's no internal storage apart from what's currently on it. So there's no online store, which is kind of a shame mm. um, because obviously everything you have to have, you have in the cartridges, which can be quite big to kind of lug around with you if you want to take it with you. Um, and if you want to keep them in their box safe, the boxes are quite big. Mm. So you can't kind of like download things on and then take it with you or add things on at like spur of the moment. And um, which is kind of a shame given that there is lots of other consoles that, that do do that. Mm -hmm. But if you fancy having the kind of old school setup of having to take your, your cartridges with you in a little bag, then perfect, because that's yeah, what you have yeah. to do that. Um, the games, obviously, like I said, are quite brutal because they're obviously designed to cost you money. Um, and they can they can be really hard. Like mm -hmm. I gave a few of them a go and I was just getting my ass kicked like constantly. So if you have like that, that penchant for retro games that will kick your ass and you want something that's easy to kind of have this having to emulate stuff or like illegally download stuff, mm. then this is definitely something to check out because it has that retro features and those retro games that I assume most people have a quite a lot of nostalgia for. Me, I just got annoyed because I was like, this game's too hard. These are definitely from before your time. They yeah, absolutely they are, are hundred percent. These. these are all um obviously these are all official re-releases and mm. as you say the the cartridges that we've covered before in previous yeah. uh, sort of mini reviews of, of evercades um all those cartridges go between all of the different systems i think yes. right so you yeah. if you if you already have them for various different versions uh of of the evercade you can just use them all they usually have multiple games mm. in on one cartridge they're yeah. all numbered on the spine as well mm -hmm. yeah, you know, collect like, them all yeah, yeah so you can see that you've got a, a full set and have them on your shelf all in yeah, order. looking pretty. But there is one thing to be aware of. If you're getting this and you've got an Evercade Versus or Evercade Versus f like cartridges that are released for that, you can't play two-player with this. Um, you can plug it into your TV, but you still have to use it as a con uh, like a controller. Mm. So um, you'd have to have a quite a long HDMI cable to be able to sit like at good distance mm. from your, your TV. Right. Um, and you can't connect another controller to it. So the Evercade versus games that are like mainly two player, you won't be able to play two player on this. So if you're looking for a two player thing, I'd go for the the Evercade versus because you can still, you okay. know. Um, it runs PS1 games mm. pretty well. Um, but it seems a bit limited outside of what's actually on the cartridges and what's already on it. Um, so that's maybe something to look into. Or so there are some PS1 to. games for this, are there? Yes, there are. Okay. Apparently, that's what Ben was saying. He was mm. found a bunch of PS1 games that he was enjoying playing. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you enjoy retro games and you're looking for a console that isn't a bit dodged that you can get off the internet, um, then this one's definitely one for you. However, like there is, it is limited in like the game selection because of the cartridges. There's loads of them. Don't get me wrong, there's loads of games. But if there's something specific you're looking for, you might have to like see if it's available on the cartridge or just wait for it to come out. Um, but again, if you like a handheld device and it's small enough that you can kind of just bug it in your bag, um, the I think the Switch is a bit too big for a lot of people. Well, for me specifically, a lot of my bags don't fit my Switch in. Um, so if you fancy a little little console, this one's pretty good. And the screen's really good on it. And yeah, I think it's pretty good. A pretty good little console. And the cartridges, uh, I mean, I don't know about the sort of more recent ones for this generation, if you like, but in the original uh, Evercade, they are sort of big collections of numerous games mm -hmm. all on one cartridge. So it's not like you've got a single yeah. cartridge per game. Like mm. uh, yeah. there are a few like that or some are like just a double pack. But uh, there are a fair few of them that have like, 
you know, six to maybe maybe more, maybe 12 games. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what the biggest one was, but yeah, you can get a whole bunch of games on some of the cards, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the Evercade EXP. Mm, excellent. Well, thank you very much to Evercade for sending us one, of yeah, course. Yeah, thank you, Evercade. Um, and thank you, Ashton. That's mm, okay. For, for taking home and having a, having a go with it. Hey, anytime. Mm. Question two. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot to mention something. Oh, yes. Oh. Um, I forgot to say that the Evercade is available now. Right now. Right now. Right this minute. Okay. And it costs £129.99 pounds okay. and €150 Euros and dollars. Excellent. So if you want to fancy checking it out, that's the, that's the stats. Go to the go to the website and have a look. We'll put it in the link down below. You we will. Go check it out. I have question two. Go on. Comes from Nikki P. Loved your Game of the Year episode last week. Thank you. Congrats on getting past 200 episodes. Thanks. On the topic of Game of the Year, what is your Game of the Year prediction for the year of our Lord 2023? Prediction. Mm. There are still some games that are in flux and perhaps will be surprised and they'll come out. uh, They will come out in 2023, even though there's no current date. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are some that are just 2023, no specific quarter or month. Mm -hmm. So they might not come out in 2023, as it turns out. Uh, But from what we know, uh, I'm thinking possibly Spider-Man 2, although all we've seen so far is a bit of a teaser. We've not seen any gameplay, but the first one was so good. Um, Or uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake, which is Mm -hmm. coming out pretty soon. And uh, I've said many times before that the original... Uh, is one of my favorite games of all time, and I think one of the best games of all time in terms of its quality. So it's certainly got big shoes to fill, but uh, if it does fill them or come close to filling those shoes, uh, it's onto a winner, really. It can't not be at least a contender for Game of the Year, if not a winner. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm really excited for that. So I wrote down my personal, what I hope my game of the year will be, but I got a bit sad because I'm still a bit sad about what's coming out in 2023. I'm not excited about anything right now. Um, but So I'm not sure if it's going to be, Spider-Man 2 might be mine, or I'm hoping Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League will be good, oh, yeah. and that will be up there for my list. However, game of the year, I think will be between Tears of the Kingdom, oh, yeah. Legend of Zelda, and Starfield, I think one will win the awards and the other one will be the public being like, it should have won the awards. Mm-hmm. It should have won it. It was the best game of the year. What about Starfield, yeah. And I think that, I think Tears of the Kingdom will win and I think Starfield will be the one. I mean, if it's good, it might be terrible. Yeah. But I think if it's good, I think that will be the one that people will be like, it should have won. I can't believe that Switch game won. Gross. Um, will be the energy. <laughs> that's what they'll say. That's what they'll say. That's what they'll all say. But I think that's what will happen this Zelda's year. Zelda's a good shout as well. I didn't even, like, I was more thinking about my, when we do, like, our mm-hmm. games of the year, and I know I won't be playing that, so I didn't even consider that one, but I will be playing Starfield, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I've combined. Think? Yeah. I've combined both of you, actually. Because right. Again, based on what we know is 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 coming out and that we are fairly confident is coming out in 2023. And bear in mind that some things haven't even been announced yet. There might mm-hmm. be something that just pops up out of nowhere. Yeah. Maybe Hades 2 will blow everyone's minds like the first one. Well, Who, there's an Xbox showcase knows. at the end of this month. So yes. maybe we'll... And they were like, you don't want to miss this. It's the new Elder Scrolls. Wow. It's coming out now. Mm-hmm. It's so on your consoles. Right Have a look. Second. If only... Uh, no, I think currently it'll be between Resi 4 Remake because every year that there's been a Resi game, they tend to release near the start of the year and they are always in contention and still in popular conversation at the end of the year. So that's likely. Mm. Uh, and equally, Starfield, I think, is is just going to have that huge mainstream appeal and ridiculous marketing push that even if it's not the best game of the year, I think it will be so... Uh, present in the public consciousness that mm-hmm. that will probably it'll be carried on a wave of momentum if nothing else to 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 the conversation if not the award. I think I'm just expecting it to be a bit naff, yeah. and I'm hope that in a way I'm quite glad that that's how I'm going into it because I might be pleasantly you, surprised. Yeah, you might have a great. Whereas time. if I go in thinking this is going to be like proper game of the year, not just you know how you've just described it, Ben, but you know mm-hmm. some people will probably be going into this thinking it's going to be an amazing game. And they might be disappointed because it's a Bethesda RPG. Um, But because I think, you know, we have been stung in the past, um, I'm going in quite cynically. 
Mm. And yeah, maybe uh, it will actually be one of the best games of 2023. And I'll be really pleasantly surprised. I'm hoping so. But yeah. Uh, I know that The Outer Worlds wasn't for everybody, but I think... I was think just going to look that up if that's coming out this I am year. going to... Well, yeah, I mean, the sequel. I don't think it'll be Game of the Year, but I think my entire time with Starfield, however long that lasts, I think I'm just going to be thinking about the wacky world of The Outer Worlds that mm -hmm. I fell in love with and kind of wishing I maybe was playing that instead. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, it's just, just so thematically similar, especially mm. if they go... Because it, Bethesda RPGs are usually full of some pretty dark humor, not necessarily in the Elder Scrolls, but certainly in Fallout, which was obviously mm. inherited uh, by them. They didn't create uh, the Fallout series. But if Starfield goes down that dark humor route, I think there's going to be so many comparisons to the Outer Worlds that may not be favorable. Looked a little bit like Outer Worlds in like the conversation yeah, talking does. heads thing. It like it look looks very, very similar. I do feel bad for them in a way because uh, they they definitely were beaten to the punch by uh, by Obsidian, mm. and now they're working together. And Obsi you know, they fell out with Obsidian over uh, Fallout New Vegas, and now they have to play nice. Yeah, <laughs> which is. Yeah. Oh, that's got to be fun at the yeah. the big Microsoft Christmas party that I assume they have. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I think. I think it's probably between those two. But I agree. I think um, that's held as a, a really yeah. good shout. Yes, yeah. that's that's, that's going to be a big one. Thanks. Great job, Ashton. Thanks, folks. Uh, it's time to move on to something a little strange. Put your papers down. Remember, New Year, New Us. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. Maybe next week, but okay. not this time. Okay. It's time for weird news. Mm. <laughs> It's weird news time. Time for some weird video game news. Remember, if you go to our social media platforms, that being Facebook and Twitter, keep an eye out because we do a post near the start of the week asking for weird news. If you submit it there, there's a chance it could be picked to be read out on the show by one of us and you'll get a shout out. However, if you want to guarantee a shout out right here at weird news time, you need to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump and sign up as a podcast producer at a certain tier. This week's podcast producers are... Nathan. G.Y. Goliath. Nexus Polaris. Duncan Wilson. Nicole Hansen. Ellie Nicholas. Erica Hutchinson. Melody L. Bonet. Katie Garrett. And Gabrielle Philipping. Thank, Thank you, podcast, podcast producers. Thank you very much. Thank you, podcast producers. Peter, what you got? I've got a story here that was submitted to us via uh, on Twitter uh, from via on Twitter from Connor Bennett. Um, it's according to videogameschronicle.com. Mm. Magfest criticized for public jab at games website Kotaku. We I can't have this. anyone being mean about How Kotaku. How dare they? That's where they we get are most of our weird news the from. best news outlet. Luke Plunkett doing it for you. He is. Uh, subheading, the gaming event questioned the publication's journalistic integrity on signage. Hmm. Oh, okay. Um, gaming event Magfest has received criticism for using public signage appearing to mock the games website Kotaku after the publication reported on incidences of COVID at last year's show. Uh, Magfest, which is currently ongoing, features panels and events centered around gaming and music culture. This year's event, which began yesterday, a time of writing, um, has drawn attention on social media after an attendee noticed a reference to the games site. Posted to Twitter by an attendee, the sign lists the direction. I went to school with an attendee. An attendee. <laughs> I'm going to go home. <laughs> um, it's, uh, the sign lists the directions of various attractions at Magfest and uh, the sort of arrows pointing. So it says uh, Pathfinder Free Play, that way. That way. And other stuff, this way. This way. Um, and then at the very bottom, uh, it ends with. Kotaku's journalistic integrity, uh, and where there should be an arrow, where there's an arrow for every other one, there is a magnifying glass with a cross through it, and it says 404, not found. Brilliant. Wow. That's so rude. Yeah. <laughs> um, the MagFest official Twitter account has now acknowledged the issue, replaying to uh, replying to Patrick Klepik's tweet. Uh, it wrote... Hey, MagFest community, we've heard you loud and clear that a joke we printed on our signage this year absolutely did not land. For clarity, it was intended to poke fun at one line in an article written about our COVID response last year. It was immediately pulled from the floor. 
The apology continued into a second tweet, again directed to Patrick and not the attendee who initially raised the issue. But I just want to say first <laughs> that actually you we were really good. <laughs> <laughs> we understand that most people did not receive it as such and that it made people feel unsafe. Oh. Mm. This was a huge oversight and lack of awareness on our part. We're so deeply sorry to our community and at Kotaku for this error, and we will do better with our banter in the future. Oh, don't use banter. Imagine, like, going to an event and it says, like, Triple Jump's talent, error 404. Yeah. I'd, I'd, be, I'd, I'd cry. I'd feel honoured. I'd cry. I'd feel honoured. Imagine last year like hit, getting negative press because of your covid response i don't know the context of that or no, exactly what no, they did, but know, like that's it. apparently according to this article that is what happened um and then this year thinking oh you know what'd be funny remember last year when we had all that negative press let's uh let's, let's do a that'll thing that'll really let's make, make them feel bad about being and mean now to you've us. got negative press mm. that'll make people feel really good about coming to our event maybe last year they didn't come because they heard about our covid well, response the, and yeah. now we're mocking the people who called out our covid response the thing about it is that like i hadn't really ever heard of magfest no really. i really and Fest then before. the fact that now everyone's like well last year you mm. had covid and this year you're being a dick and uh, now we all know about you. Well, you know what they say, oh. though. All publicity is good publicity. Well, I suppose so. Uh, the apology has led to uh, led many to ask why this was not posted as a normal tweet on the Magfest account, as opposed to a reply to a journalist, where it's likely to get far less attention. Mm, that's true. Um, the post it's because they don't really mean it. That's no. why. I'd heard that they um, that and on all the signs there was like jabs at different publications, but maybe oh, right. that was just someone saying that. To that make just seems like better. such a weird. What a weird thing well, to show. Like you want them to cover jokes. your show. Yeah, I mean, if they were funny, then. But like, if you've actually got beef with someone, you don't. Yeah, exactly. It's not. Know. It's it's not just that it's sort of like an immature response, but it's also just kind of makes you. It kind of just creates a sort of negative atmosphere right mm. off the bat, and maybe you know I wouldn't want to necessarily be involved in that, like, or mm. be around that. Just I just think that the show was being run, regardless of the validity of the of the covid response claims if i saw if i went to a show that that had that was poking fun like that i just think what is is this run by children mm. like, come on come yeah. on yeah come on um it says the post rapidly gained traction on twitter with some senior members of the games industry and media condemning it but then the article goes on to just sort of say Kotaku was at the center of the Gamergate harassment campaign in 2014, and there's just a load of filler about Gamergate now. Oh, okay. Whereas what they could do is provide context to last year, Magfest yes. uh, yeah, COVID response know. was uh, called into question, apparently. Uh, mm. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. But it, it goes on and on about people's response and stuff. But mm. that's basically what happened. A sign said, Kotaku's journalistic integrity. Ooh. Ooh. Good find it. Well, if you're at Magfest, we hope you're having a lovely time and mm. stay stay safe out there. Yeah. Mm. I have some news. It was sent to us by Joach Dix on Facebook. Who? Sorry? Joach. Joach. Dix. Dix. Okay. Okay. Gamingbible.co.uk, written by Ewan Moore. Assassin's Creed creator says sorry for the Assassin's Creed creator says sorry for all those damn Ubisoft towers. No, this isn't the right one. I've clicked on the wrong link. Hold on. <laughs> Did you think that on. your news was about Assassin's Creed? I've clicked on the wrong link. <laughs> How far into I that headline yeah, did you read the you whole read thing? <laughs> well, it's because it's about Ubisoft. Oh, right. So I was like, oh, okay. oh, they've just, instead of just saying <laughs> Ubisoft, it. they've just put Assassin's Creed. Creator, Hold on. yeah. yeah. Is that Jade Sorry, Raymond? I've, I've accidentally Creed clicked on a link in the article I was actually trying to read. Uh, right. Oh, okay, okay. And it's closed the other one. We're nearly one. there. Sorry. No, it's all right. We're nearly there. I want to know about the guy who's apologized for all the towers. <laughs> yeah. It's about Ubisoft. <laughs> <laughs> Where I've are they, the Ashton? Link. Where have they gone? Do you want me to read mine while you're yeah, doing... Yeah, mine's not open. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do Close mine. the app. Uh, thank you to, I believe this was sent by other people as well, but this was actually DM'd to me by our esteemed colleague, mm -hmm. Matthew, at Matthew Gregg on oh. Twitter, uh, who works on uh, the Cultaholic side of things. Any wrestling fans will know exactly who he is. He sits in this seat. He does, actually, yeah. He coughs on that microphone. He does, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You can cough back. We can share up. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go, Matthew, for you. Uh, this is from Time Extension. It's a relatively new website that's actually really good, deals with a lot of retro stuff. You okay? It's just, she's it's highlighting like it's being pressed, but it's not loading. Close anything. the app. Start oh, yeah, again. All oh, right. <laughs> and you'll never guess which family of websites Time Extension belongs to. 
Random. Random. Grandchild discovers 26 copies of Wario game in late grandmother's collection. She also had 13 copies of Mario Pinball Land, apparently. Was I mean, Grandma okay? Grandma has passed. Well, I don't mean that. I mean, was she okay in collecting 13 <laughs> copies or whatever it was? Well, of... you're, well I'll tell you You'll all tell about it. About Here we go. It. As spotted by Gaming Bible, a gamer named Chris Reed recently took to Reddit to share a picture of their grandmother's video game collection. Oh. However, it appears their late relative apparently didn't know how to overwrite existing game files, so amassed an impressive collection of 26 Wario Land oh, 4 that's cards. Why. Oh. Reed shared the picture on r slash gaming with the caption, My Grandmother's Game Collection. We're not sure if she knew how to overwrite existing game files, and it quickly caught the attention of other gamers online, with some people doubting the story, uh, <laughs> while some were simply fascinated with the connotations of how some Someone could be so dedicated as to acquire so many copies of the game. Uh, there's a picture. There's a lot of Game Boy Advance SPs there mm, as well. That's your dream. Oh, I, wow. I couldn't. I couldn't. The fact that there are so many so Game many. Boys as well leads me to think it's either not true or she really didn't understand, didn't understand how it anything. worked. Thought, she put the, the games in and never took them out again and thought, oh... Need to buy a new game for you. Just now. loved Wario Land. Yeah. Uh, asked outright why their grandmother had so many copies of Wario Land 4 in the replies, they responded, No idea. She also left a number of tutorials from online websites printed on paper, as well as messages for her grandchildren, me explaining the games. Aww. I love her very <coughs> excuse me, I love her very much. And this memento was very bittersweet. Maybe it was Wario's love for garlic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, in addition wow. to Wario Land 4, the picture uh, Reed posted also appears to show 13 copies of Mario Pinball Land, or Super Mario Ball, as it's called in Europe and Japan, and 19 Game Boy Advance SPs. Uh, sadly, the rest of the games towards the top of the photo are a bit too blurred to make out, though we did give it a good old try, it says. <laughs> what did you make of the story? Let us know in the comments. Uh, Why so many Game Boys there? The game thing makes sense I... if she didn't understand the concept of, of overwriting. I'm but... not sure. I don't really know, but uh, there we are. Grandma seemingly was not sure how to overwrite save files and so just bought a fresh copy every day. Well, that one's ruined. Yeah. Time for another one. Bless her. I don't want to read mine because I've just looked at it again and it actually was released. The article came out in 2020. So that was way too long Who's ago. Who's sending us weird news don't from 2020? Stop pranking me like this. <laughs> and I don't want to read any of that now. I'm upset. Okay. <laughs> Because it took you that long. And to Ashton open was it, and late coming in. into the room anyway because she was looking <laughs> for weird news. I accidentally got the same news as Ben. Yeah. Because Ben said, "I've got Wario news," and I was like, "Well, this is Grandma." I've news. got Grandma. <laughs> I've got news. Grandma news, which and is then I was like, Grandma. Wait, it's <laughs> the same Grandma. It's the same Grandma. So I had to get another news, and I found. And then I got that one, and it's. It's been a whole. What a out of interest. Huh? What was the headline from 2020? What happened three years ago? <laughs> Ubisoft China, sorry for releasing coffee cup with handle on the inside. Oh, yeah. I think we covered that <laughs> <laughs> in the pre-Ashton days. Oh, goodness me. Oh, dear. It's all right, Ashton. We'll get him next time. We'll get him next you time. You can do five news stories next I week don't instead want to of do one. Five. I just wanted to do one today. It's time for question three. It's from Kripolian, who says... Hi, Peter, Ashton, and Ben from Triple Jump. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I use your channel and Metacritic to help inform my decision-making when buying computer games so I don't <laughs> waste my time with the chaff and can thoroughly enjoy that sweet wheat. <laughs> <laughs> However, I don't apply that rule to my fave genre, strategy. For example, Dawn of Man has only three reviews on Metacritic with an overall rating of 74, and even then, that's only on PC. I still bought it on PS4, and I have to say it's one of my favorite console strategy games of the generation. I've always wanted to play Dawn of Man, actually. Uh, with that in mind, do you guys, or girls, give the benefit of the doubt, or BAP BOD? What's that? BAP benefit of oh, doubt. Oh, BAP benefit of doubt. Yeah, BAP okay. BOD. The BAP BOD. I'm glad you got that so quickly. Yeah, I was well like, done. I, I read the it. question yesterday and just, just worked it out. <laughs> uh, to, uh, do you give the BAP BOD to certain genres or developers, even if they haven't reviewed particularly well? Thanks for everything, Leon. Kiss. Kiss. Cow kiss kiss. <laughs> um, for me, I don't think there's a specific genre or developer that I would always give the benefit of the doubt to. Um, I think generally the developers that I really like, I think maybe, um, yeah, I think the developers that I really like are, uh, I don't think there's one that I like that's particularly like, that reviews badly consistently. So <laughs> what are you 
you saying? I'm so lost in this. Co- like, what, uh, just the sentence you've been saying for like the last, it feels like five minutes. I and did I get to the end of it, but. <laughs> Ashton, stop. The, stop lashing out. Sorry, the vibe in this room right now. It was now still only the last last ten me. words were all you needed. The yeah. developers I really like, <laughs> I don't think any of them are frequently negatively reviewed okay. so i've not had to develop that mindset of well i'm going to give benefit of the doubt because i really like naughty dog or whatever i understand um, mm, i get understand. what you're saying now uh and the same i think for genres i don't know like i think generally i would just take metacritic review scores as a as an indicator and uh there's not a, a genre particularly that i would think well i'm just going to play everything or you know whatever i'm interested in um the closest maybe that I would come to that is the sort of mascot platformer scene because those come around pretty rarely and it's no longer as popular as a genre now as it once was. So I think as a general rule, um, if someone from like IGN played KO the Kangaroo, uh, they would be inclined to say, well, you know, it's it's nice to step back into this genre, but yeah, it's not it's not great. And I mean, to be fair, in the case of KO, that did turn out to be true. But reading that initially, uh, I thought, well, I don't know if that's because it's a genuinely not very good game, or if it's because it's a dated genre that not so many people are into now compared to me. So I'm gonna, you know, um, check it out myself, or at least like look at some footage online and, and try to get my own uh, opinion based on that rather than just reading an article so yeah if that counts as a genre which i suppose it does then uh that that is one where um i don't necessarily always enjoy everything that comes out but i at least if i saw a negative review i would think mm, i'll take that with a pinch of salt because i think a lot of reviewers professional reviewers might be being a bit harsh on those games uh or at least ranking them lower than i would do i think mm. so Ashton, have you got a, a really clean sentence for me here? Yes. One of my answers was Naughty Dog. What does that even mean? I, think, <laughs> I don't understand what you just I said. I just was listening to Peter and I was like, I am lost in the sauce right One now. One of your answers was Naughty <laughs> Dog. Lost in the, <laughs> lost in the, in the sauce. <laughs> What's in that cup? Uh, it's just juice. Um, just, just juice. One of your answers was Naughty Dog. Yeah, because I don't think... In recent years, Naughty Dog have produced something that is necessarily outwardly bad. A lot of the games they've released have been really good, and they've got quite a good reputation, I would say. Well, I agree, but do you think that they sometimes get unfairly reviewed? Yeah, I do think so. I think, but then I think that about a lot of of like first party games tend to get like say unfairly reviewed well, um, but equally like review bombed by people tend well to yeah by the community it's, yeah naughty dog have definitely yeah, yeah, suffered yeah. At the hands um of... but i do think that like there are certain studios that i'd be like well you know they haven't let me down so far mm-hmm. so maybe they won't this time i definitely think i i didn't care mu- as much about reviewers like or reviews as much as i do now when i was maybe like 18 like when i started spending my money on games because i was a bit more like well, I've got a bit more money in my pocket because I had student finance and uh, I've got a bit more time. So like, oh, I I just wasn't really looking. It's just a game looked good. I'd give it a go. But um, now I'm definitely more restrictive and I definitely take on a bit more and I won't actually spend my money on games where I'm a bit like, well, I don't know. Like, for example, Gotham Knights would normally be one that I would just said like, well, I'll just get it because it's a co-op story game and I like to try new co-op story games and play them with my partner. So it's kind of like I did a I normally I would say those but I did a little bit with Gotham Knights and even with Saints Row. I mean, I we luckily we got a code for it otherwise I wouldn't have picked it up myself because of how badly it reviewed. But normally if a game I can is a story game that I can play with my boyfriend, I will kind of ignore the reviews and just give it a go because I like to have those kind of in the log for days when I want to play a game with someone else. Um, but yeah, I don't necessarily ignore those reviews for anything anymore. I definitely kind of take everything on board when it comes to a lot of different developers and genres. So mm. there's nothing that I will outright like ignore something because I'm like, I know better than the reviewers. Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah. 
Yeah. This sort of harkens back to a conversation we had a little while ago about how important Metacritic is mm -hmm. and review averages and stuff, because I do genuinely think that there are some genres that just get reviewed lower. There are yeah. some franchises that just sort of kind of get reviewed a bit lower. I think strategy is definitely one of them. Yeah. Um, in terms of following that rule though like I, I do i do pay quite close attention to to metacritic for for most of my purchasing but then i usually end up playing the you know the really big releases anyway which are at least pretty good mm. uh equally though metacritic i think can can do a lot of favors in that i never in a million years would have played hades mm. if it hadn't just gotten absurd review scores i don't necessarily agree with those review scores and i'm glad that i did play it but the point still stands, regardless, that I would not have played it if it hadn't scored so well, mm -hmm. because that is a genre that I wouldn't look twice at normally. Um, inversely, though, I have purchased and will continue to purchase every single FMV game that Wells Interactive <laughs> produces. Mm -hmm. I have never looked at a review score for any of them because I just think they're such campy fun. I wonder what they ha what kind of review scores they have. Probably not great, not no. good. Uh, and I feel like they don't get they wouldn't get priority placement at most publications. I know some mm. uh, there's at least one person at Push Square who really likes them, so he always ends up reviewing those and at least giving them I think like sevens. Right. And whether or not you can justify an FMV game at a seven versus a Dawn of Man at a seven, considering they're completely different experiences, again, just goes back to the conversation of how important are review scores and mm -hmm. how do you quantify the quality of a game versus another one? Or should you even? Does it even matter? Mm. Some people would say yes. Some people would say no. Regardless, though, Wells Interactive Games Forever. There's <laughs> like four coming out this year, maybe more. So excited. Man, we really need to reach out to them. Don't they yeah. follow they, you? Yeah, they follow, they follow you Triple Jump and me. You need to reach out and be Do like... they not follow you? No. Okay, they follow Do me. Do they follow you? I don't know. You need to reach out to them and be like, hi, we are a big fan of your games. Well, the thing is, whenever we talk about them, because we talk about them a lot, but it's never positive. It's The only positive thing is... I hope love they never them. stop making these and I love them. Because they are funny. Yeah. Because they are bad, basically. <laughs> um, and that's why. That's but they why. won't listen to the podcast. So you can no, just tell know. them that we really like them. I think someone someone tagged them once. One of one of our viewers tagged them once and, and us. And they said, oh, Triple Jump, we love them. No, it's like, do you? It was um, it was a video that was like um, bad about bad games or something. And it had their... They must yeah, know the thing on the, yeah. The thumbnail was That's the thing, but surely, it was one like, of their games. Because it's an actual I know I know game developers are people, obviously, but like it feels slightly different with FMV games because like they're actual actors, mm. like they're real yeah, people on yeah. the screen. And those Trying they can't out. feel good about the fact that people <laughs> like their games ironically. Can yeah. they I don't I know. I think it's if people weird. like their games, you just got like I mean they sell is a I'm, win, isn't I'm it? a paying customer. Yeah. We requested we requested review copies of Who Pressed Mute on Uncle Marcus, starring Andy Buckley from The Office, um, and uh, they did not get back to us at all. And in fact, when Fraser reached out directly, they referred us to a PR firm that did not represent them. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so it's um it's but we a, still bought and played the one. game still bought it i paid for every single one mm -hmm. beyond that um that's the main one i would say but i quite like taking a punt on indie games that sp that specifically appeal to my interests mm. like walking simulators because mm. i find those games really intriguing and really interesting and i've played a lot of them and uh they don't come out all that often but i, I do like to Especially, I think price is a big factor as well. If they don't cost a huge amount of money, I mm -hmm. might be more inclined of, to, to just take a punt on a game and give it a go. Equally, sequels to smaller games that I really enjoyed the first game. For example, uh, not it wasn't a sequel actually, but it was the second game in that style, After Party. Uh, which was developed by uh, the same developers as Oxenfree. And after mm -hmm. I enjoyed Oxenfree so much, I pretty much decided I'm going to play After Party and I don't care about the reviews. I really just want to play this game because it's in the same style and I like this developer and I want to support them. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's basically it. Well, yeah, there's like a nuance to it as well, isn't it? Because it, it can either be the case that um, you think that a, a game or genre hasn't been reviewed necessarily fairly. So it might be that, that you know, strategy games are under-reviewed in mm. that, like, 
if you if you might feel that like if you look at it, it's a good game, but it's sort of lost points, probably not intentionally on the part of the reviewer, but it's it's lost some points just because it's a strategy game. Yeah. So that's like, well, I don't think that score is accurate. Uh, but then there's instances where uh, you might look at a game and think, okay, that score is probably correct. For example, uh, there might be a, a huge open world RPG that I look at and it's it's like scored really highly. It's like a 90 or something. Um, and, and that's a case where like the score is right, but I know personally for me that that is not something that I would want to play. So you have to like, sometimes it's a case of adjusting mm. what you think is a fair score, mm -hmm. but how does that apply to me? Or sometimes it's, I suspect they've not actually scored that right in the first place. So yeah. you have to really kind of know what you're getting into with some of these things mm -hmm. everybody only has so much time and everybody only has so much money but you've got to follow your heart mm. yeah. and sometimes taking a punt on that what was it 74 rated dawn of man yeah is absolutely the right uh the right chance to take because you're pretty convinced that actually you will really enjoy you know what it. you like so listen listen to your heart mm. <laughs> Uh, let's move on, finally, are we, to, are we, should we, do you want to, we, maybe yeah. just one sheet? <laughs> what do you want to do? That's plenty. It's the big discussion. That feels wrong, actually. It's kind of noisier with one sheet. It's big discussion time, time for the big video game discussion that this week comes courtesy of David Lever. And what a lovely question this is. We're mm. not going to get into some deep philosophical debate like we did with the first question. We're not going to discuss the nuances and importance of review scores as with the last question. No, we're going to talk about Lego. Lego. David says, Lego and video games, a match made in very expensive plastic heaven. I'm fortunate enough to have a couple of Mario ones and the Horizon Tallneck 2, and they are lovely. If you could have any set or sets based on any game or games, what would you choose? Thanks, David. Someone says. else also asked this exact set, like really? exact question. This week? This, this week. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember so, who it was? No. Okay. It was a new name I hadn't recognized before, but David got in there first. Oh, David got in there first. Yeah. Okay. So well, thank you it was only fair. to everyone who to asked the question about Lego. Yeah. Appreciate you. Mm. Peter? Hello, I'm Peter Austin, and I like Spyro the Dragon. <laughs> and I always say it all the time for every question. Uh, but I genuinely would really like a really nice Spyro, like rolling green hills and portals and little hedge mazes. And, oh, that'd be really nice. The one thing I wouldn't like is if... I don't like when... Um, characters or similar things like that are built out of tiny bits of Lego. Like in Star Wars, uh, I once had a, a Star Wars Lego um, advent calendar and there was a Porg that you could build, you know, the little birds. The from, puffin thing. Yeah, the little mm. puffins. And I mean, I don't have any attachments to the Porgs anyway, so I wasn't that disappointed that uh, it wasn't a good Porg. But it wasn't a good Porg. It was like a Porg face and then you sort of stick bits of Lego on that represent its wings and its feet. And okay. I prefer it. I, I would rather have um, a very Lego style rolling hills and whatever, but then there's just like an actual... Minifigure. Yeah, kind of a minifigure with like a proper face and like not a strange thing where it, he's got a Lego shaped head into a dragon body. Mm. Like I, I want it to be like a nicely sculpted minifigure that looks like Spyro. Mm. Um, but yeah, just loads of... Nice, whimsical, colourful levels from the Spyro series, I think, would be great. I would have a great time doing that. Which one? Which which mm. which level? Which scape would you go? The, to? I mean, probably the the home world from the beginning would be pretty cool. The I tell you what, the um, I'm talking about uh, the first game, mm. by the way. Um, the the boss home world as well is pretty cool. Um, it's like the, probably the most boring home world of all of them, but. Um, it, the reason it's boring is because it's just a platform and then it's got like four dragon heads on it that open up and there's portals inside. Oh. But I think that would be really cool in Lego form. So in the game, it's like, oh, it's just a platform with some portals. But like to build four different big dragon heads that maybe hinge open, that would be, that'd be pretty rad. It'd be pretty sick nice. to build the um like <clears throat> the crystal dragon things that you oh yeah like a like full... a big one of them yeah that would be, be great pretty cool. yeah. you need to have a word with uh, Alan Ktivision yes right. Al Al Ktivision Ktivision <laughs> uh, to see if he can make it happen toys for Robert mm. yeah <laughs> yes exactly 
And of course, let's go. Let's go. Mm. I like it. Cool. That's good. Um, What's, Ashton, what, what we here? Should I tell you mine? You yeah, building? I think you should. I think it would be really cool to have a seventh heaven, seventh heaven from Final Fantasy VII. Yes, the bar. Um, bar like set with little minifigure Cloud and Tifa. With the pinball machine that goes the down into the basement. Machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, that would be they, cool. They plan their little missions. Alternatively. Uh, it'd be really cool to have the honey bee in. <laughs> oh my goodness! That... Filthy. Filthy. Yeah. And then you could have like a little cloud minifigure, and then a separate little outfit for him mm. where he's wearing a dress. A dress. Yeah. They just swap his head over. Yeah, just swap yeah. the hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, I mean, obviously, I've already played the first part of Final Fantasy VII in the remake, but I knew you would love the honey bee in. <laughs> as soon as I learned you yeah. were playing Final Fantasy, I was like, Ashton's going to have a great time. I always wish I'd recorded my reaction. I did record <laughs> like after, like as it was happening, but I wish I'd recorded my entire reaction to it, entering the honey bee in and just mm. everything that I experienced. Because it's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. I was not expecting. I mean, they really went hard on that. I had been told that I would enjoy it and that it would be uh, interesting, but I, I had no idea what I was about to walk into. And I I loved it. Did they get rid of the bit where you go into a hot tub with yeah. loads of men mm. and yeah. it's all a bit homophobic? Yes, they um, did get rid of that. Yeah, mm. Fair enough. Well, Cloud's like, ooh, don't touch me. Yeah. 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 And then the other thing that I think would be really cool is God of War from the first game, um, like a boat and like uh, the Jotnar's head, like oh, the big yeah. snake. Mm -hmm. So you've got like the boat and then on the river and then like some surroundings and then a big snake. Mm, that would be, be cool. cool. Yeah. I also spot God of War wrong on my piece of paper. What did you put? I put God of Way. God of Way. <laughs> God of Way. Oh, um, I think those would be really cool to have. I mean, I've got the tall neck and it's pretty cool. It's one of those things where like you don't really understand how like, you put out like a, a little spanner and you're like, what's this for? Why have you given me a spanner? And then suddenly it's like the uh, the one little piece that hinges the entire Lego piece together yeah. is a little spanner. Mm -hmm. um, but I think their Lego tool neck's really cool. I haven't put it up in my new house yet because I think the cats are going to knock it down. Mm. So currently it's just in three little chunks. <laughs> Have they already been at it or have you just they, not put well, it together? Well, Ember likes to sleep in the Lego box. I see. Um, okay. And she keeps bapping the top of it because it moves. Right. Um, so right now it's like, it used to be on top of a big unit but I haven't put the big unit up yet mm. so she can access it on the smaller unit. So, I so I need to keep it. Yeah, I hadn't even it. thought of like yeah. figures and statues. So I went straight to landscapes, but mm. like a big daddy could be cool. And yeah, yeah, loads of like just classic characters and monsters and things. Mm -hmm. I got some quick fire ones. Yeah. Uh, I've also gone for a fair amount of di dioramas as mm -hmm. well. Uh, the police station lobby from Resident Evil 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that would be pretty iconic. Yeah. Quite cool. Uh, Cafe Leblanc from Persona 5, where mm -hmm. you spend a lot of your time. A big Normandy ship from Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The big replica ship, sort of like the size of the Death Star, and it costs uh, £6,000 yeah. uh, to buy. Ornstein and Smau, double set from Dark Souls, mm -hmm. Big Boss Boys. Moxie's Bar, complete with minifigure Vault Hunters. Yeah, That'd be pretty cool. that would be pretty cool. Like that one. Uh, the whole of Sanctuary would be pretty cool. Yes, oh, just floating Sanctuary. Mm. That'd be sick. Uh, Oak's Lab, complete with starters, Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Oh. So just that little bit where you've got the Oak figure and then you've got the little, you've got, you got uh, Pika Square, um, Squirtu and um, Burbital. Have they done Lego Pokemon yet? They probably really should. They they had I think like they a little... I imagine they have. My sister wanted one a little while ago. It's not Lego, but it's like little tiny Lego. It's like mini. Oh, like thingies. a like a fake. But um, it's the, it, like it's James's actually car. branded, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, but... we got one in the Tatterpeel last year. We got a Pikachu, and and I did build it, and it was the worst quality bricks imaginable. They they don't stick together, and it yeah. just feels cheap and mm. flimsy. I know those really horrors, yeah. But like actual little tiny Pokemon minifigures would yeah. be really cool. Mm. That would be good. People would collect them all too, yeah. if they did all seven hundred of them. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that that little lab scene would be cool. Um, and finally, uh, the Nibelheim water tower scene from Final Fantasy VII, which has been represented in some, I think, collectibles over the years. There's a bit where Cloud and Tifa are sat on the water tower and they're just like looking up at the night sky and it's all starry and it's quite a significant moment from the game. Um, and that's been immortalized in a few different things. I think that'd be nice in a Lego set. Or the alternative thing that happens in Nibelheim where it's all on fire and uh, mm. it's terrifying. That would be pretty cool too. Mm. So those are a few. 
few ideas, but basically it was just run down your favorite game. Basically your and, favorite and games. And pick yeah. a bit you'd like to see in plastic. Well, I <laughs> I sort of swap between whenever it's a question where the answer is clearly just pick one of your favorite games. Mm. I always swap between Beyond Good and Evil and Spyro. And I nearly said, oh yeah, the Beluga Starship or like the Hovercraft. I was like, no, no, let's do Spyro this week and we'll mm. do Beyond Good and Evil next time. <laughs> it's a I'm Spyro asked. week. Yeah, exactly. Week. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for listening, everybody. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. We've got a few things to say before we bugger off, but don't you go anywhere just yet because there are some announcements at the end of the podcast, as there are every week, that we want to tell you about. So listen to the places you can find us around the internet, but don't go anywhere just yet. No. <laughs> uh, YouTube.com and Twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump. Go to both of those to see us streaming and also go to YouTube to see our non-streamy videos. Uh, when we're streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, we are modded by Lord Brotovich, Trialing Badger and Mr. Black. And if you've got Amazon Prime, part of the bundle that you're already paying for involves a uh, or includes a Twitch sub that you can spend on us at no extra cost. So why not do that? Twitter.com and Facebook.com forward slash Team Triple Jump for video and live stream announcements, legacy video content, highlights of the week, bits of news, all sorts of things. Go and have a look at our Twitter and Facebook, please. And thank you, Fraser, for looking after those. Mm. Uh, TikTok.com forward slash at Team Triple Jump. At. Thank you, Ashton, for looking after that. It's where our TikToks go. Um, and Patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. There are loads of different tiers on there. You can ask questions on this podcast. You can be a producer, get early access to certain shows. Uh, we've got the other secret special podcast over there. So go and have a look at all the tiers if you like. Thanks. Thanks. We have a website. It's triple J U dot M P. It spells jumps. Very clever. If you want to join our Discord, it's triple J dot Mup forward slash Discord and chat with our wonderful community. On there, we're modded by Jack, Joe, Tori, and Hollow Eyes. And if it's to do something, bloody well do it. And don't get mardy about it. All right. Yeah. If you want to listen to the podcast in its audio form, it's so like triple jet dot map forward slash podcast. And if you miss any of the VODs um, or miss any live streams, you can check out the VODs, triple jet dot map forward slash VODs. We are all on Cameo. You go to triple jet dot map forward slash Cameo. Also, James Jenkins is on there as well. And if you want to buy some sick and cool triple jump merch like this, like no, you this. Can't. I don't think you can buy this, can you? The hoodie. Can you? Yeah. So, the hoodie. Oh, good. I can get a replacement then. Yeah. I tore um, my pocket. You can go to triplejumpshop.com or follow at triplejumpshop on Twitter for the mm. latest match announcements. Absolutely. Uh, why not follow Peter and Ashton on Twitter, Instagram and Hive at that Peter Austin and at Scrambled Ashton and myself just on Twitter at Confused underscore Dude. We do lists every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday streams every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday being the joint stream. Place it. On YouTube, the uh, other days being solo streams on Twitch. Worst Games Ever is Friday for patrons. It's fortnightly as well. I said that weird. <laughs> uh, Sunday for everybody else. Uh, podcast is every Saturday and we do shows all the bloody time. Come check them out. Why not leave a five-star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms and we'd uh, really appreciate it, actually, mm. if, you, if you did that. It costs nothing. It's the Weirdest Games Ever Week. It yeah. is. It's the Weirdest Games Ever Week. We played a game called Demolition Girl. Mm. Um or as Ben called the file, Big Girl Rampage. Yes. So well, that's basically it's yes, basically what it, what it is. What so check that out. It's coming out on Sunday. If mm. you're if you're already a patron, then uh, it's already on the already patron. Just check it out. Yeah, it was on the Patreon last week. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can go do that, Peter. There's also something else that happened this week. We're, yeah, oh, with uh, triple J U dot MP forward slash careers. Oh, oh yeah. of course, indeed. Yeah, that was meant to be added to the sheet, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I forgot. To That's all right. Uh, yes, we are now <laughs> advertising for a freelance video editor. Um, so if you would like to come and edit for us, and when I say come and edit for us, it's stay home, stay at home, and edit in your spare stay, time, <laughs> protect the NHS, save lives. Um, it's a remote posting, but that's a good thing because it means people from anywhere in the world can uh, apply. We have a couple of editors from the Philippines mm. who are both wonderful. Uh, and we've had people from the States and all sorts in the past. So they're um, flipping brilliant. They are. <laughs> so if you go to triplej.mup forward slash careers, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there's a little careers button if you scroll to the bottom of the page. Yeah, just go to triplej.mup and it's uh, there's a careers thing there. And we'll have tweeted about the uh, job posting as well. Yeah. And we'll continue to tweet about it. We will uh, probably have it open for a, at least a week. Um, 
With, I'm saying all this before I've seen the job posting. Actually, yeah, we're not sure if it's got a closing so date. It might on it have a date yet. on it, or it might not. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll have it open for at least a week, mm -hmm. and then probably deliberate for a week. So yes. a couple of weeks time. And to be clear again, this is a freelance position, not a full time position. Yeah. So there we are. Uh, and we reply to everyone, by the way. So you don't need to worry that like you're just not going to hear anything. Yeah. If you've not heard from us, you don't need to necessarily get in touch and say, oh, have I not got the job and you've just not let me know. We will tell you if it's uh, a yes or a no. So we will. We will. Well, there's just enough time to talk about the sponsor again once more. Sponsor mm -hmm. again once more? Sure. Once more again, the sponsor. We're Let's feeling. do it. We're so close to the end now. Uh, we're sponsored this week by Ched Space, of course, which is the collaboration between beloved British institution Wallace and Gromit and upcoming space survival horror remake Dead Space. Ched Space is real. Moon is not. Mm. That's the thing you need to take away from this episode. Mm -hmm. Ich bin Cheddars. <laughs> We're going now. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. Look after yourselves. Bye. Bye.